Hello, in a previous video I showed how to replace a power jack on a Hewlett Packard Chromebook just like the one here on the bench. And in that video I mentioned that once in a while, maybe 25% of the time, when I've changed the power jack I found that there's also a fuse on the motherboard that's blown. You can tell that when you replace the power jack, plug in a good power adapter, and this little light right here next to the power jack doesn't light up. This has a blown fuse. And I thought this would be a good time to show you how to replace it. First, I'll zoom in on the board and show you where the fuse is located. Okay, if you look at that white speck right there, just above the connector where we plugged in the new power jack cable, that is a fuse. It's a it's under this plastic cover, this plastic insulator. I'll peel that back. And this is a 1206 size SMD surface mount fuse. This is actually a 5 amp fuse. And I can't tell what the failure mechanism is, why that fuse blows so easily under a, a broken power jack condition. But nonetheless, it's blown. If you take an ohmmeter and connect across both sides of the fuse, you'll find that it has infinite resistance. It's blown. The easiest thing to do is to solder a new fuse right on top of the old one. The old fuse is blown. It doesn't hurt to leave it there. And it's very easy to damage this circuit board. So I don't want to run the risk of damaging the board or lifting the pads and traces off the board by desoldering this fuse. So on the Chromebooks that I've fixed before with this problem, I've had good success just taking a new fuse and soldering it right on top of the old one. So here's a pack of new fuses. They're tiny. I'll put a link down in the description of the video of where I found these fuses. But there's a 5 amp 1206 fuse. At least I'm pretty sure they're 5 amp. The old fuses have a little tiny letter N, like November. You might not be able to see it on the video. And I forget now what manufacturer I found that uses that lettering code. Maybe Little Fuse. They're a pretty popular manufacturer. But I think that's supposed to be 5 amps. The PC shouldn't draw that much current. So that uh, that seems reasonable, if not maybe a little high. But that's what we'll put back in is a 5 amp fuse. There are a few different ways to do this. And what I'm going to try is adding just a little bit of solder to one end of this fuse. Just a little ball of solder. Like that. And then I'm going to take the replacement fuse. Place it on top. If I can get it close, I realize my hand is in the way. These have a top and a bottom. Usually the light side goes up, the dark side goes down. I'm not sure if that makes any difference or not. So there's the new one on top of the old one. I'm going to line them up as best as I can. Like that. This is a really nice tool. It's a Bowtech soldering aid. I don't know if this is chrome plated or if it's stainless steel. I think it's chrome plated. But the solder will not stick to this tool. It's pokey on one end and it has this little slot on the other end for manipulating wires when you're using point to point wiring. So I'm just going to use this and apply downward pressure on that fuse while I take my soldering iron and heat up that little solder ball pressing the new fuse down into it. And there's one end. Now I'm going to turn this. And this is a little trickier because there's a component right next to the end of this fuse. But we can get in there and add a little bit of solder. I actually put the solder on the end of my soldering iron. Normally you'd never do this. I can't really get in there with anything else. Maybe a finer tip soldering iron would be helpful. And there we go. Now I'll apply power and see if the light comes on. Before I do, I'm going to hook the keyboard back up because once I apply power, this will probably turn on and I want to make sure I turn it right back off until I install the keyboard 
because the keyboard acts as the heat sink for the processor. Keyboard is in place. Put the protective cover back over it, insulator, just for a moment. Lay this here. Take our power cord and see if the little light comes on. Success. And since that's on, we can go ahead and press this keyboard in place. That's it. The rest of the reassembly is covered in the other video, so if you have not seen the other video, please give it a watch. If you have any questions, discuss down below. Thanks for watching.